Hi guys, it's me Legardo Laxon, also known as Chino and Artie. I'm going to be doing a review called Skull Crackers. Yes, I actually have the box. I bought it a long time ago in Game GameStop back then, but it was not called GameStop. Uh, originally, GameStop was called Software Etc. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, I don't know why I still have it. I remember everybody were telling me to throw this piece of crap away. You know, it was uh, the worst game ever. And... Um, this is the box. I'm going to describe the box and right now I'm setting up the gameplay to work. But um, this is, um, I mean, just looking at the cover, I mean, I don't know how to describe it, okay? Like, first time I, I looked at the graphics in the back, it inspired me to buy it because I was so into 7th uh, level games. I don't know if you heard of them. They made the Monty Python games along with um, uh, Battle Beast for the PC. Now, um... This one is not by 7th le uh, level, I, it was something else, I, I just said, hey, you know, Skullcracker, okay, there's a guy right here that looks like Duke Nukem, and they have all these uh, industrial and gothic looking guys in the background. Now, this is supposed to be that guy, uh, this is actual gameplay, it's actually just a side-scrolling beat-em-up game, with the most lousiest animation, using 256 graphics, alright, resolution, <laughs> It's not even in high def uh, resolution. It is that bad. I mean, this is the worst game ever developed for the PC. I believe that's a side scrolling, and it's a CD-ROM based because the full motion video does have its comedy uh, elements. You do you do need to have QuickTime installed to play this game. And yes, this is a Windows 95 game and Macintosh compatible. Uh, already, what's inside the box is empty now because what you get is just one CD. But um. From the comfort front cover, I already had explained. Uh, well, that guy right there is kind of like your chief right there telling you what to do before uh, the mission starts. The crazy thing is, who is this guy? Uh, he is a non-selectable character. But in everything else, I don't know why. Um, uh, I don't. E I, I mean, I know the word skullcracker is where you're holding a. Well, I usually, if you get into a fight, you, the guys might be using a brass knuckle, but he does not use a brass knuckle. He's just bare knuckle over here. See. And he's just fighting and kicking. And his animation just looks so bad. And when he punches him, it gets really graphically red and green blood. But it's a horror game, supposedly, but it's not even horror. It is so bad. And here are the characters. I mean, look at that. I mean, okay, you you are Mortis Rigor. And then there is Bonebreaker Jones <laughs> for a female. Bonebreaker. I don't remember that for a chick. Um, the mall crawlers. Bugs, Groggle, Eddie, Moss. Oh, man, what kind of... And you do you do carry weapons, too, so far if you progress in the level. But the graphics was so all false advertising. It looked like it's a full screen sh beat -em up when you only get a quarter of the... Well, like this... Like, yeah, that much of the screen's already cut off. So, and then your health meter is just... Uh, it's a big mess. Um, anyway, Skullcracker. Here's the. It comes with the user guide directly from the sleeve, and behind the CD, uh, just the same. And I don't know who would actually publish this game. I mean, it's black and white. I remember it did have a registration card that I don't even bother mailing, but I just still have it in the box. But this is what's inside. Uh, that's all it's inside. And you know what? Um, I'm. A, I mean, whoever's in my channel. You see, I'm 35 years old now. Now, uh, anybody younger than me knows. Okay, GTE Entertainment. Yes, they made software. They made the great FX Fighter fighting game. I actually have that on the PC. Even FX Fighter Turbo. Uh, but they are a game publisher. But not really. GTE is actually Verizon. If you guys know what Verizon is, Verizon is a is the cell phone company or the you know DSL or the you know um, every, it, it's a telephone. Every time I look at GTE back in the days, it was a telephone company. I was like, wait, wait a minute, GTE Interactive, then GTE Entertainment. But they this is the worst publishing game ever. I mean, the reason why I got it because I was influenced by the seventh level game, and then um, that's like Battle Beast, and then. And when I saw GTE, that kind of thought, I was like, wait a minute, they published FX Fighters, so this game might be good. Hell to the no. This is the worst beat em up ever. I mean, look at this menu.
Oh, God. Even the music, you gotta hear this. It sounds like a porno music. It would have sound better if you're beating up girls. You grunting like that and the girl get hurt? Yeah, with this music? Oh, yeah, that's really porno. This re this level reminisced uh, to me a lot to Robocop vs. Terminator and the level 2 in the Super Nintendo game. But, um... I thank you guys for watching. This is just a quick review of Skull Crackers. Not a lot of people have done a review on this or even have the box. Because I bet everybody had already wasted and throw those away. I mean, when I think about worst fighting games, I mean, everybody still has their original copy of Shaq Fu. I mean, I do have my Super Nintendo. Even the CD that came with this piece of crap. Um, yeah. Game. I mean, remember that CD that came with this game on the Sega Genesis? Is a hip-hop CD. Uh-huh. No. Hey, Shaq, man. If you, you, I saw you did that one chip challenge. <laughs> And also, uh, you tried everything from boxing and everything. But uh, anyway, uh, thank you guys for watching.